So this is my PCB I just got from JLC PCB. It's uh, about 41 millimeters by 41 millimeters. It's an ESP8266 uh, light and sound project. Kind of like a light and sound board. It's got a uh, ability to create sound with a piezo. And it has four neo pixels on the corners. It's also got four neo pixels on the back and one in the middle. And you can either use um, the front, the back, or both. Uh, depending on, you know, if you want just components on one side and the other side, you know. Or if you want to do dual side and have lights on both sides. It's got a USB connector. It doesn't have any programming capability. It's only um, power. Um, but I do have a DTR auto reset circuit in here for uh, serial UARTs or serial USB serial converters with a DTR signal which is a little more popular than ones that have RTS and DTR, which is the, you know, uh, typical dual transistor reset, uh, node MCU reset method. Um, pretty happy with the board, came out pretty good. Had um, one or two problems with it. And I'll uh, zoom in here and show you. I don't really have very good light right here. But, um... I had a problem getting these slots cut. Uh, I submitted them on the milling layer and included a note to plate these slots and they said they would not approve that. That if I wanted plated slots I needed to put it on the drills layer. So I had to change it to drill hits, uh, plated through hole drill hits. You know, like a bunch of them in a, in a row. Which I don't like to do because it's sloppy and it's it doesn't look very good on your renderings. Um, and I talked to some people and they said in the past they've done it the other way and it works fine. When I asked them about it, they said that uh, some engineers won't see that. And um, so I don't know if there's a some difference in their approval process or some if they're changing it. I don't, I'm not really sure. Um, oops. One of the main problems here was they failed to do... They modified my ground pour, and it looks like anything that was less than uh, like 10 mil didn't go through. So these traces right here are all at least 6 mil between these traces for this ground pour, and they should have they should have poured. I mean, they were you know the Gerbers all have them on there. Um, some something in their process removed them. And it's weird because it doesn't really make sense because, like, uh, where's a good spot to show? And like, you could see where it, um, it put a part of it. And the same thing happened over here. And then I think some over here. And, um, which is strange because it's, you could see it comes down, the ground pour comes down the trace and then just stops. So I'm not really sure what they did there. Um, they said that that should have been fine. Apparently when they redid it, something was wrong. They said if the board, they wanted to know if the board worked or not. I think they were going to see about crediting me if it didn't, but I'm not going to worry about it. Next time, I'll just make sure I put traces on any ground pours, but I think they made a mistake and did something wrong. Other than that, uh, everything's pretty good. Um, it looks pretty good. The uh, vias look pretty good. Um, the These are... Um, these are... Uh, I think this was designed with... Uh, their min spec is for two layer is five five, five mil trace width, five mil spacing. I went with six. So my min traces are six mil and spaces are six mil at least. And um, I think my drills are 0 0.35. Um, yeah, 
whatever the minimum for two layer boards is. It's the absolute minimum. And they, uh, their, their alignment's pretty good. I've seen some people have problems with uh, micro vias on multi layer boards, but this, this seems to be fine for me. The surface finish is pretty good. Silk screen's really good. A lot of the silk screen is tiny. I forget what points these are, but they're way below the suggested um, 24, 24 mil or whatever it was, a 32 mil, something like that height. But um, you can read most of it, even though it's super tiny. Some of it's a little hard to make out. Like the RX TX, I squeezed these in here. These are way small. Um, so I'm surprised they came out at all. I'm going to go ahead and go over what the board does and some design decisions I made. So on the front here, I got a USB, a piezo, ESP12 or a 12E, 12F, or a 12S. So it's got the center pad for the S. Uh, pull up resistors, some tantalums, some capacitors, uh, an ASM1117 regulator, uh, a button. Uh, I have a position for an LED or a uh, WS2812 2020 NeoPixel. There's a footprint for an SHT21 humidity temperature sensor or a uh, HTU21D. I have two two millimeter mounting holes. I have a header on the top, header on the bottom. This header has all the programming stuff. This is I squared C header, um, so you can put an LCD on there. Uh, depending on the pinout, you got you know some of them have different pinouts, but uh, the footprint for the piezo has a. Um, a footprint for a header or or a um, through hole nine millimeter piezo. Uh, the header is for using the transistor output to drive um, a remote speaker or uh, an inf infrared blaster. Um, so you can use you know you could do something else with the board besides just sound. You could use it to control IR. That's the theory. I haven't tested that yet, but it should work. You just need a transistor to drive it. I might have to change some of the resistor values for the transistor and all that. Um, there's a back feed diode here so that when you're powering through the header. Um, let's see. Four NeoPixels, 50-50 size in the corners. On the back, there's also four NeoPixels in the corners and then one in the center. There's a footprint for a LM75 temperature sensor with uh, some some uh, little jumpers to set the address if you need to change it. I have uh, test points for most of the GPIOs um, here and here. I have a breakout test points for the USB header, and then there's a couple more. A couple more uh, jumpers here as well. There's a um, that will jump the button between uh, a reset as a reset button or an I/O input. I think it's uh, I/O two. Um, and then here is a wake sleep jumper for reset to GPIO 16 for deep sleep wake. Uh, there's a jumper right here for volume limit. Uh, there's a resistor on the front of the board for the piezo, um, and if you cut that, the volume limit resistor will be used. Um, right, this just bypasses it. So if you want to, you know, keep the keep the audio to a minimum, um, to a certain maximum, I mean, you can um, set that value on the front and, and cut that jumper. You know, otherwise, you know, some, you can some, do it a little bit in the software. It's hard to do volume control on PWM, but you can you can do it a little bit. It, it, uh, it will change your um, quality a little bit, but it, it kind of works. Uh, there's a jumper here to bypass the front um, LEDs. So if you only wanted to have LEDs on the back, 
you know, for cost or whatever, um, or if you just don't need the components on the back, and the, you know, on the front, you're going to put your components on the front and you want to mount this and have the back empty, then you can, that, that jumper right there will jump the first DIN data input on pixel 0 to 5, whichever one is 5. And it'll, it'll um, bypass the front. Uh, if you try to bypass ones that are existing, it, sometimes it won't work because it'll pull down that that data input. Um, so it's really just for populating the back and not the front. And uh, the center pixel is the last pixel, so you can just omit it if you wanted to. Just have four, four on the front, four on the back, uh, or you know, you know, any any other combination as long as it's in order. Um, and then this is just some headers for the LM75 address, and uh, that's pretty much it. It's, um, uses a um, USB with um, some slots so it holds better so it won't break off. Um, just in case you want to use it as a nightlight or something and you are unplugging it and plugging it back in a little more than normal. A uh, device like this you won't normally be plugging in and unplugging. So I didn't really, I didn't have the four, the four hole is a really strong one, but I didn't use that. And you can see where they, where the ground plane didn't come through here. Seems like, um, they didn't apply their six mil rules to the clearance for that. They used some higher higher clearance. I measured it, comes out to about 10 to 13 mil and they cut them off. I don't know what, what happened there. Oh, I have some prototyping space here in case I had a bodge. This is a prototype. This is the first revision. So I have some prototyping space here if I needed to bodge something. Um, and then I have a ground header 3v3. You know, that square is 3v3. That's ground. And then I have um, is there something else? Yeah. So this one down here is VCC. That square right there is VCC, 3v3, and ground. So you could just tap them. And, and you know, this, sh this you should be able to fit 0805. Uh, some of these bigger pads, maybe even, maybe even some larger sizes. Um, you might even be able to fit a very small dip package. SOT package on there. I'm not really sure. I kind of changed my mind at the last second and I didn't really have enough space there, so. But I, it's, you know, if I had to bodge something, you know, seriously bodge. Uh, it turns out everything pretty much works. Uh, I only had to do one bodge and that was for this DTR reset. Um, and the DTR reset is comprised of um, a capacitor and a diode. It turns out I needed a resistor in there as well. Um, so that the so that doesn't get stuck in a, you know, from the, when GPIO zero goes high or whatever, it doesn't feed back and, you know, cause noise on the reset line. I'm actually not using the reset, I'm using uh, CHPD enable for resetting. Oh, I forgot to talk about this one right here. This is the LED jumper. This ju jumps the LED between a power LED or GPIO zero. So you can use the LED as a power LED or an IO status. And um, and that switches between using the data in on the WS2812-2020 footprint or a regular uh, 0805 LED. We have an assembled unit. And here you can see NeoPixels. ESP12 regulator, capacitors for the regulator, back feed diode, reset button. Uh, these are I square C pull up resistors. I didn't put them on here. Um, this is I square C header, uh, unpopulated footprint for the SHT temperature sensor. I haven't tested that yet. Um, this one doesn't have the DTR reset populated. So here I have a WS2812 2020. Uh, LED 
uh, or you can, and the, and the jumper in the back is, well, all right, on this one I have it bodged over to GPIO, a different GPIO, because I wanted to test something uh, on, on, on GPIO zero. But normally um, this would jump across and GPIO zero would tie to this data input or this LED. And you can use either or. And this gives you a you know full color status indicator. And these are piezos driven by a transistor that's biased, has a back feed, uh, not a back feed, uh, kind of a kickback diode because the piezo is capacitive. And then it also has a resistor to pull the transistor high, so, uh, to, you know, so that it will bias because this is a capacitive load also. Um, so there's two things you got to do with that, and they might not be needed, but I found that you get better. You don't get any, as many voltage spikes and stuff like that if you do that properly. Uh, some capacitor for the NeoPixels, one over there. There's a capacitor here for the SHT sensor, um, and then there's resistor here for the data line or the. This resistor works for both data line, the data input, or the positive for the LED voltage drop, uh, current current limit, current limiting, and uh, that's it.